Making arsenic is incredibly dangerous. If you don't want to die, seriously, do not try this. Appropriate PPE was worn throughout the procedure. I don't take any responsibility for injuries or even death if you recreate what I did. Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to make some elemental arsenic. For this we are going to need 5.4 grams of mixed ori pigments real gar or 8 grams of iron powder which is a huge overkill and some carbon dioxide for the inert atmosphere. For our own safety we are going to wear a lab coat, nitrile gloves and a gas mask throughout the entire procedure. Because of its poor water solubility, arsenic is somewhat safe to handle in its metallic form. It should still be handled as if it were highly toxic because of the formation of toxic soluble oxides. Arsenic vapors on the other hand are highly toxic when inhaled. The ore that we used is a mixed ore pigment real gar ore. Judging from the color and to make calculation easier, we assumed that all of it was arsenic 3 sulfide. This meant that we at least needed to add 1.84 grams of iron powder. We used a huge overkill though to make the reaction more efficient. The arsenic sulfide ore was crushed and weighed out. By the way, if you're wondering, the 5.4 grams of arsenic sulfide was just something I came up with after the 10 grams didn't want to fit into a test tube nicely. We crushed the ore into semi coarse powder. In the end, it looked like this. It was a nicely yellow powder. 3 grams of iron powder were weighed out. This was my initial decision, but later on I decided to add much more. We prepared a double sided test tube ampule using a Bunsen burner, but in the end it broke. Having learned from my mistakes, this time I used a wooden clamp and it worked well. No broken glassware and a perfect ampule. We began by adding the crushed ore to the test tube and afterwards topped it off using 8 grams of iron powder. Using a piece of glass wool, I wanted to try to fixate the powders. If I tried making arsenic again, I wouldn't add the glass wool because the arsenic stuck to it and it was nearly impossible to sublimate it off. In the end, we were left with this 3 part ampule. At the bottom, we have the reagents in the middle, some part where to condense the arsenic and at the top a part to connect the vacuum pump. The deck was stretched out a little longer to make sealing under vacuum easier, but it sadly broke and we fucked up. I wanted to purge the ampule with carbon dioxide a few times and evacuate it afterwards only to seal it off. I was a little too hungry and stretched out the neck too long and it broke. Therefore I added a makeshift filter made from a syringe filled with cotton and attached it to the test tube. I was hoping that we were able to completely seal the ampule this way. The arsenic would be produced, it would resublimate in the middle part and afterwards we could just ampule it. We would have stretched out the bottom part in order to create an ampule from the middle part. Because we fucked up though, we had to improvise and do it another way. We sublimated the arsenic by gently heating the test tube with two blow torches until it started melting because I guess the blow torches were not hot enough. The slightly green yellowish gas you see here is actually arsenic gas. This spicy air might look like the vapors of your mom's essential oils, but if you inhaled it, you would probably go and meet your maker. The reaction that's taking place between the arsenic sulfate and the iron can be seen above. The arsenic sulfate reacted with the iron to form elemental arsenic, which sublimes off, and iron sulfide. Using one or two or a big Bunsen burner, we achieved the temperatures necessary to sublime the arsenic. You can see these huge, really pretty looking chunks of arsenic resubliming on the walls of the test tube. It seems like we did a great job at sealing the ampule with a somehow inert gas. Vacuum would have been better, but hey, we made some shiny arsenic. Nothing to worry about. If you look really closely, you can actually see that the crystals of arsenic that resublimed are extremely big. In the upper part of the test tube there was also some arsenic, but it was not nearly as much as in the bottom part. There's still some glass wool inside of the bottom part and it will be a problem to separate the arsenic from the glass wool as you will see later. The sample of the arsenic from this tube will be contaminated with some glass. While still wearing the gas mask, we gently broke open the bottom ampule. With the help of a pair of pliers, we carefully removed the glass wool and the arsenic from the ampule. While doing this, it's important to go slowly. 
You don't want any iron sulfide to come over. A few hairs of broken glass wool landed within the arsenic, but it was still shiny enough for an element sample. We might be able to use this arsenic for some experiments which involve filtration to remove the glass shards that made it into the ampule. In the end, I quickly purged the ampule with carbon dioxide, argon could also be used and afterwards sealed it. On the left you now see extremely pure shiny arsenic from the top part of the ampule which isn't contaminated with any glass and on the right you see the glass contaminated arsenic from the bottom part. In total, 1.4 grams of arsenic were collected. This corresponds to yields of 42.6%. We could have gotten more arsenic by simply heating longer, but the test tube already started to melt, so I decided to stop. Even though we were wearing PPE, we didn't want to spread any toxic arsenic vapor throughout the area. Because the bottom part still contains a lot of arsenic, I decided to keep it. There shouldn't be any unreacted arsenic sulfide left in this. This grey mask consists of unreacted iron, iron sulfides and arsenic. I might try to retrieve the arsenic from this by dissolving it on some acid or with some other method. We've got to do some more research before we try this though. If you have an idea or have knowledge in that field, let me know and please write a comment. I'm interested. Now we are going to take a look at the arsenic under the microscope. This is the arsenic sample contaminated with glass wool. If you look closely you can see many, and I mean many, 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 thin hairs of glass. In comparison to that, this is the pure arsenic. With absolutely no silicon dioxide hairs in there, it looks beautiful. It has a silvery shine to it and it looks like some sort of diamond stuff. I hope that it stays this way because if there was oxygen left in the ampule, it would corrode over the period of a few days and it would turn somewhat greyish black. You should still remember that arsenic, even in its pure form, is somewhat toxic. You should neither touch nor eat it. Besides that, you should also not stab yourself with a piece of arsenic. Regarding the toxicity, let's talk about it. Besides its toxicity, arsenic is known to cause cancer. Arsenic interferes with the way that the DNA repairs itself and inhibits this repair mechanism. Arsenic compounds disrupt ATP production. Furthermore, it increases hydrogen peroxide production in the cell, leading to the formation of dangerous hydroxyl radicals. As a result, death from multi-system organ failure, probably from neurotic cell death, occurs. A death from arsenic is lengthy and painful. Headaches, confusion, diarrhea, drowsiness, vomiting blood and cramping muscles are just a few of the symptoms of arsenic poisoning. In the future video we are also going to explore the MARSH test, which is a highly sensible test for the detection of even small amounts of arsenic. And there you have it, elemental shiny arsenic from ore. It was easier to make than I thought and in the future we are going to scale up that process to produce arsenic in bulk. If you like this video make sure to drop me one of these and consider subscribing to my channel if you don't want to miss out on other awesome chemistry content in the future. I wish all of you a nice day, until next time, bye.